So a lot of you know, Dave and I have been living in our small Winnebago Echo camper van for over a year now. And these guys too. Hi, lady. Oh, you, you, you too. You've been living in it just like us. And during that time, we've all traveled to over 30 states and we've seen some pretty incredible places. Oh, and if you knew how much money we spent on gas, y'all, it would flip your bird. And we've always wondered what it would be like to live in an RV, travel around the country, and not have to worry about gas. Well, we actually get that shot. So Winnebago has given us their very first all-electric RV. Yes, yeah, so Dave, the kitties, and myself, we're gonna be moving in from desert snow into the brand new electric RV to see exactly what that is like. I'm very excited. I know Dave's excited. The kitties, I'm not so sure just yet, but uh, let's move in. Since we've been living in Winnebago's first all electric RV now for several days, we thought it was a great time to give you a full tour of the van and also show you how we live in it. And of course, you guys know we're gonna compare this van to our current Winnebago Echo and could we see ourselves living full time in this all electric camper van. And I know Tanya is really excited to share with you what it's like on the inside. Oh, I am excited, but first I need to clean up. Shoo, shoo, David, you take care of showing on the outside first. All right, all right. So while Tana gets things cleaned up on the inside, I'll show you some of the cool stuff here on the outside. And make sure you guys stick around till the end because we're going to let you know how far this goes on one charge. Now, this is on a Ford Transit chassis. And our Echo is also on a Ford Transit chassis, which we love because we love the EcoBoost gas-powered engine. Now, this Transit. And... This is where you plug in the chassis battery. Now the chassis battery generates 67 kilowatt hours of power, but that's not the only battery in the van. Now this is a house battery, which powers a living area of the rig and it generates 15 kilowatt hours of power. Now, unfortunately, I had to measure it in two takes because I only have a 16 foot tape measure, but the actual length of the van is just under 20 feet. And in comparison to our Echo, which is 23 feet, that three feet makes a huge difference in terms of driving and also the ability to park in regular spaces. Wait a second, do you guys see any storage out here? You see any? Let's check the other side. Yep, see that? There's none on this side either. Yes, unfortunately there's no outside storage and that's actually something we really love about the Echo. We have tons of outside storage and so you'll probably need to invest in some third party solution to try to get some more storage on the outside. Now speaking of storage, there is some storage through this back entrance right here. Now this is pretty much the main garage space of the electric RV and for us it's actually a great home for the litter. This area actually opens up to the inside so the kiddies can actually go back and forth into that litter when they need to. You can see there's actually some additional storage over here. Not a ton of space, but we put in our power cords in there, some tools, some other things as well. And then over here, what looks like storage is actually all the water controls. And you can see you can take uh, an outside shower here if you'd like as well. But it also shows where you put the water in for the intake for your fresh water tank. Up on the roof, you have 500 watts of solar. Now that compares to 455 watts on our Echo. Real quick before we go inside, because I think Tanya is ready for us, you'll notice that the all-electric RV has no awnings. And on the Echo, we actually have two awnings, and one standard one and our Batwing, and we definitely love the Batwing awning, so we will miss not having an awning on this rig for sure. Well, welcome to the inside of Baby Blue, all electric RV. So we're gonna start from the front and kind of work our way back. Let's go. So first of all, our captain seats are turned around and both of them have the kitty blankets because we're living in them. And what we do like in this rig is that the fact that both captain seats do turn around. So it's nice to be able to have that extra space in such a small space. Now, one thing that this has that we don't have 
is the larger screen. So it's on the Ford Transit chassis, uh, both this and our Winnebago Echo. But this has the newer screen, which is much bigger, a lot more features to show in there. And I really do like uh, this. So this is probably one thing I wish we had in ours that we don't. But what I don't see is the extra cup holder um, up cu that we do have in ours, which we do enjoy having that because we like extra coffees, water, and smoothies. So there's room for all those in ours. Now, let me show you something that's really cool here um, that we don't have that I think is a really cool feature for this small spot. Check this out. Really do enjoy having this built-in convertible table you know Dave and I actually were both sitting here because the captain seats both kind of turn at an angle we're both able to enjoy dinner here last night but it's also great use for work another space for work which helps to create that separation of space in such a small space so I got my coffee got my computer got my batteries ready to charge got my large water yeah I'm all set to get to work a few more things I want to point out while I'm up here. So this right here is just basically the electronics storage unit. I wish this wasn't here because this could make a great use of cabinetry space. You know, everything is all about space in here. This is, um, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I think it might be an extra hook to hang things if you need it, like your dish rags or something to that effect. I don't know, just, or maybe an extra support for the table. I love how they have the built-in sort of the Connex charger right here. So you can charge your phone, lay it right up on top there to get your phone charging without having to plug anything in. Of course, there's a small little window, which is nice for that little fresh air. And then here, which I thought was a cabinet for storage, I was like, yay, more storage, is actually just the roof access ports has um, 120 outlets in here. It also has, a, which is really helpful, the USB-Cs, uh, which are the fast charging, and of course the USBs and a DC connector as well. So you'll see these all throughout, which is really nice. We do have those in ours. We don't have the fast connect, which I wish we did have the fast. Now one place I really appreciate it in our Winnebago Echo is right up here. These two sections in the Echo, if you recall from a previous uh, tour, we have storage compartments right in there. So just popping in the essentials that I need to get to pretty much right away and one side. And of course, you know, things on the other side, which are really helpful. So this doesn't have it, but you know, it's a smaller van. I understand it's also not as high as ours. So you kind of have to move things where you need them. All right, so getting to the kitchen, which I really enjoy getting to. So this is a really decent kitchen for such a small space. I like the color schemes that they used here. It's got a deep sink. The countertops are pretty solid for, you know, its material. And I have to tell you, I love this right here. Look how much space I have to be able to prep, do my cooking, but also you don't notice here, which we do have in ours, well, where's the uh, stove? Where, where is it? There's no propane burners. No, there's no propane. So in a drawer right off to the side, woo! you got extra counter space here. So more additional prepping. And it does come with an induction cooktop. I like the induction cooktop right there. Boom, which is what I use in our rig anyway, which is also nice because with that being said, there's no propane. There's no waste of propane, no having to find a propane station. It's all in-house, baby. Now, I do like the locking mechanisms that they have in here. It almost looks like a traditional handle that you'd find in a kitchen or in a home. But they actually push in to lock these. So when you're driving, you have these right here, which are great. Net, you'll find those in different locations, different drawers throughout. Uh, and they're soft closing, which is nice. And then lock and latch. And I think that is super handy to make you feel like you're really in a home on wheels. So let's talk about the storage first before we get into the bathroom. So it's really nice that they're actually using really 
I like this. I like the fact that they have the hydraulic hinges in here, which we don't have in ours. Ours are basically the ceiling magnets, which have a tendency to come out because they're so strong in grip that it loosens the screw um, that rips out from the ceiling. So it's nice that they don't have those here. A decent quality material that they did use on these cabinets, which is really nice. Again, the color scheme works really well to make it feel bright and airy. And of course, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Four on this side, two larger ones right behind you, and I'll show you in a second. But you can just store a lot of things in here, and that's basically what you have to look forward to. You don't have much storage on the outside, so you've got to really adjust and make do on the inside. So for me, that is a big win for us in the Winnebago Echo is that we living in it, you know, full time for us, you need the storage. It's really important. So you could probably adjust and live a little bit more minimalistically. Nice. Now something we really enjoy in this class B that we do not have in ours is a one system control panel that allows you to control and monitor things from your fresh water, your gray water, even the refrigerator temperatures, your AC, your lights, all in one hub, which for us, we don't have that. And also it has allowances to be able to control this through your uh, mobile device as well so you can go off and do your thing and you might get an alert if you're not too far off that hey your refrigerator door is open temperatures are dropping get back and close it before dinner is spoiled for everybody welcome to the bathroom one, one thing i want to point out about the bathroom before dave steps in and talks about the toilet situation is that i like the fact that this bar is removable so you have your shower curtain like so ta-da and if you want to really have a nice shower without getting things, you know, hitting on things, you can remove this bar. There you go. Now it's a shower. Singing in the shower, like showers, shower. Oh, yeah. Dave is going to talk about the toilet, which is a little different than ours. That's right. Back to toilet duty for Dave. Back to toilet there duty. We go. All right. So it is a cassette toilet. And so, of course, in the Echo, it's a cassette toilet as well. The difference, though, this is a removable cassette toilet. And you'd actually, to actually empty the cassette, which is five and a half gallons, you have to take it out of here and bring it outside through here, Ooh. out this way. Whereas in the Echo, you, of course, you come from the outside and slide that uh, cassette retainer out from the outside. So quite a bit different. Now, similar size in terms of capacity. But from a shower standpoint, you can actually take this out if you want, move the toilet outside if you want to have an outside toilet and have the whole space to shower in. Ooh, making it a really big shower. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing I like about this, you guys, I can fit. I can fit on this right. perfectly when I'm sitting down. There's no awkward positioning to have to take a tinkle. It just and, works. And I will say it's definitely not as high as it is in, uh, in the Echo. Yeah, Dave can't right. stand up in this one. And also in terms of taking a shower, uh, there's no, in the Echo, you have Insta Hot Water. Yes. Here, you only have a two and a half gallon uh, hot water tank effectively mm. based on electric heat. So it's going to be a quick shower. Okay, so you might be wondering about the fridge situation. I will tell you, I love our refrigerator and the Echo way better than this Dometa here. This is a tiny, tiny refrigerator. So you really got to make use of space in here. It does have a freezer, so you can still get your ice cream when you want it in there. But that's the space you got and as a woman that likes to cook i need <laughs> i need supplies and this here is definitely made for a college dorm hi everybody welcome to our bedroom space this is awesome this is something that we do not get in our Winnebago Echo because one, we don't have access to a back view like what you're about to see in just a second. But this is a full on bed, almost like a full queen. And it could be a single or a full. We'll show you that transformation in just a second. But it is so convenient right now. I mean, seriously, comfortable. Obviously one person has to uh, adjust to the other person having to climb over them all night long to use the restroom. But boy, can you not see how big and comfortable this bed is? I love it. And of course it comes with two night lights right here. So we both have individual controls over the lights. If one person wants to stay up a little bit later and enjoy the beautiful book reading, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But I'll tell you, nothing right now beats the view behind you. I mean, I mean seriously, take a look at this. That view, everybody. Woo! 
that is the view I get outside of my window every morning. That's a handsome view. Oh, well, thank you, baby. <laughs> While Tanya is getting the dining area set up, I just want to quickly point out that there are no dualies in the back of this rig. Of course, our Echo does have dualies, just given the overall size and weight, and we certainly would prefer to have the single tires like this. So that is definitely a bonus here for this vehicle. So Bailey asked me to point out to you guys, this right here, this is a grate that's attached by a magnet and a couple of posts on the bottom, but it's removable. So when we're not driving, this is out so that the cats have their creative space right in here as well. And of course, when we're driving, it's just as easy as sliding it back into the grooves that are on the floor there, like that, and attaches the magnets, just like that. So Bailey and I have already taken liberty of setting up the dinette table for us for dinner, um, which I have to tell you, it's a very easy uh, table to set up. Uh, the bed is very easy. All you do is flip it over. It's like a three point mattress here. The sheets are still on. So when we unfold this, it's very easy. Now there's an extension bracket here. You can briefly see it's behind these seats here. This pulls out, it's called the Zoomy. It pulls out, latches to the floor, allowing you to extend the bed, obviously making it a full bed for more support. But this is the dinette table. What's really cool though, it has a flexibility so you can slide out. Okay, you need to get out. There you go. If it's just you here, great. Uh, if you want to create more in the long way, you can. So it just has like a lot of flexibility, which is really nice for this lagoon uh, dinette table. Um, what I don't like about the table um, is I don't feel it's as sturdy as it should be um, on one side. And that might just be something they're working on in the future. I'm sure that may change. Or if you're handy like some folks in the industry, you can go ahead and make your own. Make it more appealing to your lifestyle and to fit your your needs but that's the dinette table in a nutshell you can have you can see it's really comfortable seating here comfortable seating over there where Dave will be sitting and it's just a very convenient place to lounge which it, we don't have this in our Winnebago Echo that's the one thing I wish we did have is a little bit more comfortability to lounge to make it feel like you're create a separation of space especially if you're living in the vehicle so definitely like it comfortable right Bailey I agree Bailey you agree Bailey you agree Dave Let's tell everyone how far can you go in this RV on one full battery charge. Right now on one full battery charge, it's 108 miles, right? Which doesn't sound that much, no. but it is improving. And so our hope, and I know Ford and Winnebago are really expecting this over time as they improve on technology, that future models will definitely get much higher than that. Absolutely. And one last thing, we have another video coming out very soon of us exploring some of the cool hidden gems here in San Diego in our electric RV. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you guys in the next one.